limited privacy focused ghost lifestyle does not have to be expensive, does not have to be stressful. Today in the ultimate privacy tutorial, we're going to get started on this series and we're going to break down what you need to get started. How to start your ghost life and be in the top 2% of people like me with real anonymity right now. Operation Real Privacy. All right, so buckle up. You're not going to want to miss this one. I'm going to break everything down step by step. Also, the first link down below is going to give you a little bit more information on some of the things that I talk about today. So after you watch this video, it'll make more sense and you can check out that link as well. Kind of supports what I'm saying. Anyway, we're going to break down the first seven things in this series today. Ultimately, this is going to be about a four to five part series so subscribe if you haven't already and buckle up let's go first thing is phone smartphone you need a phone and we're going to start this series surrounding the phone now what phone should you get for most of you i hate to say this but android but not your standard android graphene os right a os b open source graphene os is probably the most common most widely regarded flavor for a lot of people, especially if you're new. I know we're talking Android, we're talking Google phone, but for a lot of you, if you're just getting a phone. Now, can you do what I'm gonna say with an iPhone if you already have an iPhone? Yes. Can you do it with a, a standard Android? Yes. But you are gonna have to really harden your privacy settings. And I gotta be honest with you, I do recommend upgrading to Graphene OS and ultimately probably Linux. I'm currently looking at three different Linux phones Digging deep here at Privacy X Project, going through a lot of stuff when we do release these reviews, because I don't do unboxings, I don't do impressions, I only talk about things that I know about on this channel. So there's a lot of good Linux options coming down the pipe. I've talked about some of my favorite phones, I've talked about Clear Phone, I've talked about Linux phones, I've talked about modular phones, but for most of you, Graphene OS. Once you got your phone, whether it's your current phone that you already have right now, maybe you're watching this on your phone, if you're doing that, you need to lock down the privacy settings. I've talked about this for Apple and for Android, so you can check out those videos here on the Privacy X Project or go to privacyxproject.com. Next thing you're gonna need once you got your phone, your basic operating system for your privacy, is you're gonna need a VPN. Now what VPN? A lot of good ones, mostly bad ones. VPN is a old corporation company-based product that was repackaged and sold to people when the internet got popular about a private encrypted tunnel. We've talked at length about VPN, so I'm not gonna break down what a VPN is because I've done videos on that, how it works. I've done videos on that. I'm just gonna say I recommend private internet access for the most basic, good quality, non-logging, at least to our knowledge, VPN that you can get affordable and it actually works. There's a lot of VPNs out there that are really good. I recommend a bunch on Privacy X Project, but for the sake of this video, we're gonna talk about private internet access. Next thing, we've got a phone, we've got a VPN, communication, what is the phone for? Now, I'm not gonna to touch on social media because if you're using social media on your phone, you clearly don't care about privacy. Using social media is fine, do it from your desktop, do it from your laptop, log in through a browser, Right? There's a lot of ways you could do it. I talk about how I use virtual machines on Tor. I've done tutorials. I talk about Firefox. I talk about uh, the Brave browser. I talk about a lot of other things when you could use your PC and you can lock down a computer, Linux, Apple, or... It's hard for me to say. Ah, I can't even say the words. M Microsoft. Uh, yeah, you can, <laughs> you can lock any of those down, especially Apple and, and Linux obviously being the best. Now, ProtonMail. You need to have communication. There's a lot of emails out there. I would recommend ProtonMail, even though I have my gripes and my issues with ProtonMail, I do use them. I have multiple email options that I use. I also use four phones, I've talked about this. So I'm really big on compartmentalization. It's very important, but I'm trying to make this tutorial very basic for you and what you should look at getting right now. I don't think you should just be like me and get four phones and get all these gadgets and devices. I run companies online. I make a full-time income online for most of my life. I'm a very big privacy and security advocate. I have high-level clients that I work with. So for me, it's mandatory. For you, if you're just looking for some base level privacy, there's a lot of other options that you potentially have and you don't have to worry about some of the stuff that I have to worry about. I would probably recommend in that regard 
you potentially look at Proton Mail. It is a good option. Next thing we're going to talk about is communication apps. Do not use SMS text. SMS text is like sending a postcard. Okay, everyone can see it. Everyone can see it. Do not send SMS text unless you want everyone to read it. Also, emails and identities, phone numbers. Do not use your phone number on your phone. Now, I've talked before on how I age phones and use burner phones. I've done in-depth tutorials on that and videos on that. But Mint Mobile is a good option, or even if you have a carrier and you lock down what you're doing on this phone, that is okay, but you need a way to communicate. That's what a phone's for. Should you use the built-in phone app and the built-in text? Never, absolutely not. So what should you use? A good basic option to get started is Signal. Now, my gripe with Signal is they, <laughs> you have to use a phone number to verify, so I use a dummy phone number, and you have to have a name, so of course I use an alias. So I'm gonna give you two recommendations right up front. Signal and Sudo. Signal is free, and I recommend everyone use Signal. It is definitely better than what you have, and while Signal's not perfect, it is far better than what comes stock on any phone. And then Sudo has a small nominal yearly fee I think the basic plan is literally less than a dollar a month. So I'm talking very nominal fee and you get basically an alias. You have a name, a number, an email. Sudo is a great option and I pair that directly with Signal on all of my different aliases for my different phones. Business phone, you know, personal phone, travel phone, uh, poker phone because I play high level poker. All these different things, right? I break it all down. So these are the two apps that I highly recommend that you have very important so now we've got a phone we've got a vpn which is going to help security we've got email which is very important to communicate whether it's personal or business we have standard communication with phone communication and with text-based communication what do we need next well you guessed it we need a browser we need to be able to use the internet now should you have a bunch of unnecessary apps you can use some apps, but I recommend only using apps that you use. For me, mostly what I do is I do a note and I write my favorite apps and then I delete them and then I, I, I basically track how often I use them. So I've got about 10 apps on my phone that I only upload when I need them. And if you set it up, especially on my business phone, so even like my iPhone, I've got a, the, the latest iPhone always I keep for my business phone. You can delete your apps, and then when you re when you re uh, populate them, you can have everything saved. So it takes like two seconds to bring them back in. But while they're deleted, you're set. Now, if you're going to use a more secure phone, like I do with Linux, then you structure only what you need. And keep in mind, a lot of this should be done on your computer because computer has far less tracking capabilities and you have much more control over a computer than you have your phone. Right out the gate, your phone with GPS tracking, triangulation, fingerprinting, uh, you know, all the different ways they can track you with cell towers and with predictive algorithms, with behavior algorithms, it's out of this world, literally. Not to mention Bluetooth, not to, I mean, it's just, I can sit here and name a hundred ways your phone can track you. So what we're doing is we're trying to mitigate a lot of that and compartmentalize what we do. Browsers is where you should be at. What browsers? Well, I've done a lot of videos on the channel about Tor, and I highly recommend Tor. You can download the Tor browser. If you do have an iPhone and you're like, hey, I can't get a Linux phone or a Graphene OS phone right now, use the Dot Onion browser. I've done a tutorial on that as well. It's the exact same as Tor. Do not use any of these hocus pocus browsers that talk about how they got VPNs and Tor built in. No. Get the thing at the source. These are a bunch of people, guarantee they're logging your data, guarantee they're logging your information. Get actual Tor or Dot Onion on Apple, which is, which is a product produced by Tor for the Apple App Store. And then you've got a browser. Now, is it realistic to use Tor all the time? No, it's not, it's not, because let's be honest, I'm not currently an underworld spy. As much as I would like to be sometimes, I'm just not, right? I'm, I'm joking. I actually wouldn't. That doesn't sound that fun. It looks cool in movies, but I'm not. I, I, just, I just live a certain lifestyle and work with clients in a certain lifestyle. Now, the fact of the matter is, Tor is a great option, but what are some good browsers? Well, one of my favorite is Firefox Focus for uh, Apple. I use Firefox Focus. Another one is, you know, Firefox in general has a lot of customization, 
but the Brave browser, I've been using the Brave browser for a while. I've talked a little bit about the Brave browser. We've been running the Brave browser in rigorous tests for three months now, and I have an in-depth tutorial and video on how to get the best out of the Brave browser. What I like about Brave is it's the kind of browser I would recommend to my mom, right? My mom, not a tech person. Cody, what should I do for privacy? Brave, out of the box, it's better than most. It's a perfect, nothing's perfect, but it's better than most. Then from there, we can make tweaks to get maximum usability but it's a, 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 it's a good browser we all know that so out of the box usability a usable browser i highly recommend it the next thing i recommend is a faraday bag and i've talked about these at length i've done at least three or four videos i feel like having a phone and not having a faraday bag doesn't make sense right it just doesn't you, you should always have one Putting your phone on airplane mode helps and it turns off some of the features, but it still can be tracked. Faraday bags are not bulletproof. Well, they're literally not bulletproof, but they're also not completely signal proof because it depends on your signal strength. That's why I've done tests and we've done videos talking about the best ones. Also, in that first link down below, I recommend the ones that I personally use and I keep with me every day. I've got four or five of them, got them in my office, got them in my cars, got them you know, in my backpack. Everywhere I go, I take uh, one of these to slide my phone in and I never have a communication a meeting anything typically without putting my phone in these I usually put it on airplane mode and slide it in here now again I'm not trying to pretend like everyone's trying to listen to me and what I'm doing they're not but it's possible and it's not about thinking that you're so important it's about getting in the habit so the one time you do say something or do something you don't want to be used against you you're in the habit yeah, I don't want to come off on this channel like I think I'm so important and the whole world's trying to get to me. They're not. And if they did, good luck. Unless you're a high-level government agency, good luck. I've had people try to dox me and find me. No chance because I've been doing this for myself and my clients for a long time. And I've been able to create a ghost lifestyle. That's what I'm trying to teach you how to do. So I want to be very clear. I'm not trying to act like I'm so important and I'm hiding from something. I have nothing to hide from. I'm a father. I've got... Uh, I'm a taxpayer. I own multiple businesses. I pay more than my fair share, in my opinion, of taxes. I pay boatloads of taxes. I do all the things everyone else does. I don't break the law. I do my thing. But keep that in mind. So a Faraday bag. And the last thing I want to talk about is very important. It's actually a two-parter. One of them is mic lock. I've talked about mic lock. I think this is really important. These devices track you, but the most important one is YubiKey. Having YubiKeys, and I have these for everything, both USB Type-C, I have Lightning, I have uh, standard USB. Uh, these are so important because you want a hardware authenticator. This, I call this to my clients, the key to life. This is the key to your digital life. Having two-factor is vital. Phone, better than nothing, but not a good option. Authenticator apps, okay. And we've talked about the ways to authenticate, and I've done videos specifically on YubiKeys, so you can check those out. But guys having one of these is vital for your devices i use them on all my devices because you you pretty much have to in today's society it's not if somebody tries to hack you it's when it's not if you're a victim of identity theft it's when and i hate to sound negative because i'm not but it's a fact it's just statistically a fact it's, it's you know it's just one of those things where the the sheer numbers are overwhelming so a mic lock and a YubiKey is going to do wonders for you. And then obviously having your phone in Faraday bag is going to cover the camera and it's going to block out the signal and it's going to put you in a very good secure place where you can use your phone and you can use your technology. Your technology doesn't use you. Now, a lot of people have been asking me, Cody, can you help me build a ghost life? Yeah, I can. We've been booked. We've had so many people ask me that, but the second link's down below. We've actually got a brand new uh, system in place. So you could check that out. A lot of people have been asking me, can you help me disappear? I'm dealing with creditors. I'm trying to start a ghost business. I'm trying to do X, Y, Z. I'm evading stalkers. I'm trying to be invisible online, et cetera, et cetera. All these different things, check it down below. I've got a video on the whole process and we can help you with that process more in depth. So check that out as well. But anyway, I really appreciate you guys checking out this video. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this. We got a whole bunch more tutorials and this is just the first part, but this can help you get going for a very nominal fee. I'm assuming you already have a phone and the next time you do a phone upgrade, do it to a more secure private based phone. And the rest of the stuff, I mean, we're talking small amounts of money, guys, for your privacy. I mean, how, it's kind of like putting a lock on your door. Uh, would you pay 250 bucks to put a lock on your door to protect everything you own? Probably, I'm guessing, right? And it's a similar kind of concept. You pay a couple of bucks for these little gadgets, 
and we're not even talking 250 bucks, but you, you pay a, a small fee for them and it protects everything. I mean, how much is the headache worth of dealing with identity theft? How much is the headache worth of dealing with all these different things? It's worth a lot. You'd pay a lot more. So these are a couple tools and I get these questions every day. So I just wanted to help you guys out. I genuinely do appreciate it. Uh, and yeah, go check out Privacy X Project's first and second link. And I'll see you guys in the next video.